Hi everyone, and welcome to Jane Talks Trek, where I'll be talking about and reviewing an episode of the original series, The Next Generation, Voyager, Deep Space Nine, or Enterprise. Today, I'm looking at Charlie X from the original series, first season. Or as I like to call it, that time Kirk really needed Professor Xavier. This episode was requested by Sam Smith, so thank you for the suggestion, and let's get going. We begin the episode with some guests from another ship, and they bring with them Charlie, who has the youngest and oldest looking face I've ever seen. Wonderful. What the hell was that? The others way oversell how awesome Charlie is, and he's excited by how many people are aboard. What is with these Pac-Man butthole badges? We have a large supply of entertainment tapes, gentlemen. Did Kirk just offer them porn? They rush off, Charlie gets jump scared by the door, he's confused by Rand. Is that a girl? That's a girl. And into the credits we go. We find out via Captain's log as McCoy tests him that Charlie was the only survivor of a transport crash at age three, and McCoy finds him fascinating. Charlie tells him that the crew of the other ship didn't like him, despite his best efforts, and he likes the look of this guy's stick, before he gives Rand a present, but she can't stay to talk, and he smacks her bum. Awkward. The main characters chill out on the bridge and squabble over who will take care of Charlie, and how the hell he managed to survive by himself. Later, Uhura sings randomly, which makes Spock smile? So she puts on a little performance as he plays, and Charlie walks in, so she sings about him instead. Oh, Charlie's our new darling, our darling, our darling. He glares at her, which makes her lose her voice, and then he wows everyone with a bunch of card tricks, and somehow manifests one in Rand's boobs. Charlie asks Kirk why he's not supposed to slap a woman on the bum, and Kirk says, you're not supposed to hit women at all. Oh, really? Kirk gets a call from the people who dropped off Charlie, but their signal drops out, and next minute, all that's left of them is debris. Then Jean Roddenberry, in the galley, calls with news that the food has suddenly changed, so Charlie walks off. Kirk plays chess while this guy drinks coffee, and Spock worries about Charlie, right as he shows up, so Kirk bails, leaving the two to continue the game, and Charlie strops when he loses. Do you need to poop? This is an interesting collection of hairstyles. Rand tells Charlie off for being rude to her gal pal, and he weirdly tells her that he's hungry, horny, wants to smell her. She complains to Kirk, who finds it funny, but talks to Charlie anyway, and he gets agitated because he can't seem to get things right. He wants Rand to love him, but Kirk says to stop pestering her. Ooh, it's Jewel from Gladiators. Ooh, flippy. Wait, what is Kirk doing? I don't want to do that. Kirk and Charlie spar, and when Kirk dumps him on his ass, this guy Sam laughs. So Charlie erases him from existence. Holy shit! Kirk calls security, what's with this very specific lighting? And Charlie fights back, so Kirk orders him to go to his room. Jeez, dad, way to be a buzzkill. Uhura calls to say all phases are now gone, and Spock talks into a deck of cards, and they discuss what Charlie is and what the hell to do with him. Oh great, look who it is. Kirk asks if he blew up the other ship, and he says yes because they were big meanies, and leaves again. Uhura gets electrocuted by her station, the helm won't respond, and Spock does this. There's a tiger, tiger burning bright. I'm sorry, can we get that expression again? <laughs> ah, priceless. Very nice, Mr. Ears. Kirk tells him off so he leaves, running into the lady from before and turns her into an iguana before giving Rand a flower. She is pissed he broke in and signals through to the bridge, bringing Kirk and Spock running, who can't do anything so she slaps him and he makes her disappear. Charlie says he needs Kirk, Kirk tells him off, and Spock casually announces that both his legs are broken, so Kirk makes Charlie fix that problem. They try to confine Charlie to quarters, so he removes the whole wall and then rapidly ages this woman. And Jesus, thanks for this nightmare fuel. Uhura death glares him and he storms off, while Kirk comes up with a plan to overstimulate his powers so McCoy can sedate him. He strops back in and plonks himself down in the captain's chair, so Kirk enacts his plan and chucks Charlie around. Oh, hey Rand, what's with the green lights? Who is that? Charlie begs to be able to stay, but the floating exposition head says he has to come home, despite Kirk actually standing up for this little shithead, and he turns into a Dalek. Stay, stay, stay. 
right before he's taken away. This was a pretty decent episode considering how early it was. Usually they're still working out the kinks, but aside from Spock smiling, it was solid. This is another instance of Kirk matching wits with someone, which is where I feel he's at his best. And we get two sides to his character. The embarrassed dad who doesn't know how to talk to his child, and the no fucks to give captain who is sick of your bullshit. While I did enjoy it, this episode felt long. I don't know if it was the pacing, or if you know from the off that Charlie's a dangerous psychic kid, so you're just waiting for the things to happen, but it did seem quite drawn out. Even though it's too early in the show's run for Scotty, Sulu and Chekhov, the characters we did get got a good showing. We got a horror singing, which is always fun, and lesser characters got their time to shine too. Now as for Charlie, the eye thing was kind of weird. Better than the hand movement in And The Children Shall Lead, which this episode is quite similar to. And I think they pushed him into asshole territory just a little bit too much for me to feel sorry for him. It's a good look at adolescence and feeling like an outcast trying to fit in. So the crush he has on Rand is fine, as is him questioning behavior norms and getting agitated when he can't understand. But he goes from that to kind of unhinged and power hungry, which is a shame because he goes from misunderstood to villain. It would have been better if he was not in control of his powers and instead he made people accidentally disappear because of extreme emotions, which would have made him equally dangerous but less villainous, which would have made his final plea and Kirk going to bat for him all that more impactful. So there you have it, that was Charlie X. If there's an episode of Star Trek you'd like me to cover, pop it down in the comments below or come say hi on social media. If you enjoyed this video then please hit that like button, it really does mean a lot, or consider subscribing if you want more videos like this one. Alternatively, feel free to check out my other YouTube channels. Thank you so much for watching, I'll speak to you soon and live long and prosper!